I think if I took a couple weeks off and I kind of cleared my head, I think that I would know better what I'm supposed to be filming and where I want to take my channel. I've been cynical, oh so cynical Never thought somebody could save me From another fall, from another scar But I'm all healed up, standing steady I couldn't see colors, it was all in gray Till you showed me every shade Now I feel like summer Everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I hope you had a good week. I had such a busy week. I had my friend Hal come up and we, we went shopping at thrift stores and he helped me buy a new sofa. Kind of helped. <laughs> I hope you're going to have a wonderful Easter weekend. It's just, I don't know, Easter is a very special time of year, isn't it? But I have gotten so many little messages from you about decorating. And I wanted to go over my five pillars of how I decorate. Now, I'm not an expert or anything, but I think it's interesting when we exchange ideas of how we decorate. What, what's in our head when we're picking out furniture and plants and, you know, art and things that, well, things that make our house a home. What's in our head? So that's what I want to talk about. And you know, the funny thing is, after I got done writing down my five pillars of how I decorate each room, it was almost like a roadmap of how to live a, a happy life. And I couldn't believe it. Well, do you think you could open that for me? You know, some people think you do too much for me, Hal. Well, they'd be absolutely correct. When you go out shopping for furniture or you're at the thrift store, do you ever think about, well, I'm decorating for my living room, but who, who am I decorating that for? Me? Friends? Family? Do I want to impress people? One of the most successful videos that I ever produced is a video called How to Make Your Home Look Expensive. So there are people that when they decorate, they have this, this concept in mind. I want people to think I'm successful. I want people to think I have a little bit of money, right? So I'm going to buy very, very expensive items. And even though I don't like them, I'm just going to put them around. And that, that'll get me where I want to go when I'm decorating. It will look classy and expensive. And I did that. I did that for many years. And it was, it didn't work. It made me feel fake and shallow, <laughs> well, what can I say? But most of all, it, I, I felt like, you know, a stranger in a strange land. It wasn't pretty and it wasn't me. I was decorating for other people for all the wrong reasons. So maybe that's something to think about because if you don't know who you're decorating for or the vibe or the feeling that you wanna project, you're just going to float. You're just going to be lost. You're going to buy, you know, some furniture that looks like this this year and then next year you'll buy some. I mean, it'll just be a mess. So I would say actually take the time and say to yourself, who the heck am I decorating for? And pick your audience and go with it. You know, my daughter-in-law, Nicole, her mother said after she walked through my house for the first time, she had a little quizzical look on her face and she said, I can't believe your house is just so pretty. It's just so pretty. <laughs> and it just made, 
it just lifted my spirit so much because it was exactly the goal I had in mind to make things not only pretty for myself, but to make my guests feel when they walk in that it's special, that it's unique, that it's pretty, that something that they might remember, maybe one or two things. Yeah, so ask yourself perhaps, what the heck am I decorating for? Who am I decorating for? And how do I want to feel when it comes to sitting in my very own home or apartment? The second pillar for me is being unique. When I am decorating, I want something that has history, that has dignity. And that's why I love to decorate with antiques. And it doesn't have to all be antiques. I have very modern furniture. I have furniture that catches the light, which kind of lends this feeling of airiness and, uh, you know, an air of magic. But if you're going out to Hobby Lobby or Home Goods or wherever you might go and everything that you buy is new and you do your mantle and it looks so pretty, right? You just got everything gold and it's blinged out and when somebody comes over to your home, they'll think, oh yeah, I saw that at Home Goods or yeah, I saw that in a magazine for Hobby Lobby. I mean, there's something that it's just cold. You, you want to have a, a slice of history in there, don't you? Maybe something from your grandmother or, or something from an old friend, just something unique, something that catches your eye and your, the, the eye of your guest, something that is different, something unique, because without that uniqueness, it's it's just cold. It's like a doctor's office. You're not going for that vibe of <laughs> this is a waiting room and you got 10 minutes before the dentist will see you. You don't want that vibe. You want richness. You want history. You want something that nobody has ever seen before and the chances are when they leave your house, they'll never see it again unless they come back over. That's so important to know who you are, grab your items, place them in some special way that people will remember. Balance. Balance is so important in a room. Imagine like that it's a grid. So you can see that everything needs to be in balance. The furniture, the rugs, the art on the wall, everything in perfect harmony. It doesn't mean that you have to have matchy-matchy anywhere. In fact, the less you match, the better. When you talk about some of the most successful interior decorators in the world, they all seem to have mathematical ability in common. In other words, they can see uh, the, the spatial equality of things like perhaps you and I can't, but we can develop that a little bit of being extremely aware that a certain space has certain ways that it can be filled up. And if it is in balance, it is harmonious and it is beautiful. And it gives this personal feeling of calmness, of peace and well-being. It's just beautiful when things are in balance. So if you have a room and you got all the heavy furniture on one side and then you got all the plants on the other, well, it's just not in balance. It just, it says something to your subconscious of like, hmm, something's not right. Something's making me feel a little bit nervous.
a room in balance, perhaps like a life in balance. It's a beautiful thing. I looked at a lot of sofas today, and this is the one I like. It has the width that I like. Well, you like that other one. You just didn't like the color. I almost bought this sofa, but I felt that it was a tad too large. And, well, it just would really be the star of the show in the living room, and my living room is too small. Okay, so what am I paying for this? All right, this is 890 dollars. It's a really a beautiful sofa. Add another, it's going to be add another sixty dollars for tax. It's going to be very cheerful for me. Are they going to charge you for delivery? Balance is so important, and my home here is a Cape Cod. It was built in 1939, and it has a very colonial vibe. No way of getting around it. A very long entryway living room and dining room. So. So every time I walked in, I had this very low, um, very modern kind of Hollywood Navy sofa. Well, it didn't fit. It wasn't in balance, and it also didn't fit the vibe of the house. When I went out to shop for my new sofa, it was so important that the shape of it was perfect, at least perfect for me, and that it was in balance with my two chairs that I love. So when I went out, I wasn't really looking for the color of the sofa. I was looking for the shape, the shape of how high the back was and what type of era did I feel it came from? Because I felt like the chairs that I have in my living area is very 1945, 1950. And I wanted that sofa to match and I got exactly the shape of the sofa that I want. Now, I don't have it yet. It will be delivered tomorrow. And if it comes early, maybe I can show you what it looks like in place. But I think it's gonna be fine. And if I don't like the texture and the color of the sofa, I can tie that in with the right color throws or the right color pillows. It's gonna be fine. But I think balance to me is probably one of the most important things next to comfort. But yeah, I'm excited to, to get the new sofa. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful table runner. Wow, this is old. I think this would look good with my Tuscany Rose. I think this would be perfect. Siam silverware, what is Siam silverware? Do you know him? Well, it's silverware that was made in Siam, which is no longer there. Now it's Thailand. Boy, this is very pretty. What do you think they use this for now? Um, it's not a to spoon. dip a hard-boiled egg out. No. <laughs> you see, the, the size of the forks are nice. I like small forks. Why but do you like, like small forks? I don't know, but... You have a very small mouth? <laughs> Dainty. Mm -hmm. Dainty mouth? Oh, I can see that. To decorating you are a complete success if you walk through your home and you just marvel at the rooms like oh my goodness it's so pretty it's it's so lovely here I I love my home I love my apartment I love what I've done here it's everything that makes me feel happy and peaceful you are a success if you feel that way there are things that great decorators always do. Rooms are always in balance and they always know how to play with that light no matter where it's coming from, whether it's artificial from lamps or whether it's the light from the windows. They have this talent of making sure that the furniture that they have placed that catches the light is going to illuminate that light and illuminate the room. They are masters of color, but they also are masters and manipulators of emotion, of making sure that there's 
tremendous continuity to every room that in other words, your living room and your dining room and your kitchen, there's a common thread in all of them, something that reminds you that there's order here, there's clean lines here, there's no clutter, it's, it's just elegant. But when a great decorator does a mantle, so many times you'll see them pile up some books some stinky old books, and then they put a bowl of fruit on there, something living, something alive, and then maybe they, they stick a plant on the other side. It's in balance, but it's not the same. It's not the same height. It's not the same type of decoration that they put there. But why do they put the, those stinky books and that bowl of fruit on top of those books and you look, you stand back and you look at the mantle and go, oh my God, that's genius. It's just beautiful because what they've done is they've almost reached your subconscious of making you feel like, ah, home. My mama had a bowl like that. My grandmother, she always had fresh fruit in every room. That plant, that plant is so alive. It looks so green and beautiful. And I can see beads of water on that plant. They must have just watered it. It's alive. It's, it's fresh. It's, it's nothing contrived. It's just life. That's what decorating your home is. It's tying everything together in, in harmony. Oh gosh, this china is so beautiful. Oh, Hal, do you like this? I like that one. What kind of china do you have at home? I have paper plates and plastic forks, sporks. You don't have any fancy china? I have no dishes. Well, what do you do when you have a dinner party? More paper plates. <laughs> Decorating is kind of a funny business, isn't it? It's probably the most private thing you'll do for the public. But in the end, people who know you, they'll never remember the chairs in your living room or the, the fantastic lighting you had in your dining room. They're gonna remember how your house made them feel. And they won't exactly know why. Like Nicole's mom who said, your house is just so pretty. She said it in such a quizzical way. Why? Because how my house made her feel is what she will remember. It, it made her feel like things were beautiful in such a harsh, toxic world at times. Isn't that wonderful? And, and really, when you think about it in life, people, well, I'll just say for me personally, people are never gonna remember my bad haircut or how my shoes didn't match my outfit. They're gonna remember the things I said, they're gonna remember how I made them feel. Was I cruel? Was I kind? Did, did I lend a helping hand to them? Did I understand them? Did I listen to them? They're gonna remember how I made them feel. And that's true with everything in my life. My home, maybe, maybe you don't like the way I've decorated my personal home, but I hope that my family and my friends, when they're in my home, they feel love. So the bottom line is there's so many rules to a well-decorated home. And there are a lot of rules to living in a well-lived life. But in the end, maybe both, well, maybe for both it all comes down to one thing, love.
haven't seen you in this week. You got a sore throat? Oh my goodness, 3.30 on a Saturday afternoon and look what just came. My new sofa. I just love it. It is kind of a, a blue whitish grain and that matches the deep blue wall uh, that I have to the west. I haven't had a chance to style it but I'm going to love it. It just, it gives the living room a much more cohesive feel. Oh, and there are my Easter baskets for my grandchildren. They're going to be here in two hours. So I got to chop, chop, edit this video and get it up for tonight. But I just wanted you to have a sneak peek at the sofa before I styled it. And, well, I honestly think that this 1940s vibe, I think I achieved it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance down below, could you maybe share a few decorating tips or just let us know how you're doing? Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, safe new week. And when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi. Okay. Oh, by the way, Desi has a new vet. He's great. He's such a nice guy. He asked me how much I thought Desi weighed, and I said, about 30 pounds. Desi only weighs 14 pounds. I didn't know that. I, I found that so interesting. <laughs> anyway, have yourself a great week. When you're done having your great week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here.